Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to our first seminar of 2023. Uh, we've got a great seminar. We're going to go over all the communities that you should invest in this year, the best ones, why they perform that way, some of the economic indicators that uh, point towards investing in certain areas of the city. We can finally get started with our seminar. This week's seminar, uh, the best places to invest in Calgary in 2023. We really like doing this seminar because we get to touch on a lot more communities than we normally do in a regular seminar. We've got a lot more time to delve deep into why these certain communities are good are a good place to buy a rental property, to do a flip, to do wholesaling. So it's it's very, very exciting for us because we can talk about many, many different communities. So without further ado, we'll get going here. Um, so people always ask, invariably when we have a meeting with them is where do we buy in Calgary? What are the communities that have good rental properties? And what we always tell them is probably every single one. <laughs> yes, uh, it all depends. We, you know, it comes down to price range. So we always ask what price range are you in? Some people even, we've got clients team that don't even invest in real estate to have tenants but they invest in real estate to get appreciation. So we've actually bought properties for our clients that are just buying properties to live in, but they want to get into communities that are going to appreciate more than others. And how do we work out these communities? Well, there's lots of different factors. There's infrastructure. There's um, like there's, there's many, many things to roads, to developments. Um, there's employment centers, uh, shopping centers, everything that you would need to live Tenants will need to live too. So whatever is close to what you want, you know, what you need to access for services and goods and stuff like that, tenants are going to want to be there as well. But it has to be within their rental price range. And like as I said, it depends where we want to go, depending on what your price range is and what the rental rate is. Yeah, and a huge factor that we look at is what we call spillover communities. And Tim, what we've never really realized before spillover communities can go both ways they can go positive or they can go negative so a lot of people always ask us and we get this question all the time what about somewhere like forest lawn well there's some things in forest lawn and in around those areas that will spill over into other communities around there that just are not going to help that community and we want to we want to tell you why because we've been there and you can watch a video on our crew tv all about it we had to go and interview a tenant just to get the first hand advice on it but there's drop-in centers there's uh drug rehabilitate re rehabilitation centers there's there's halfway injection sites halfway houses so these sorts of things are going to attract and if you own a property in that community or around that community we can definitely tell you that we've had investors that do invest in those areas, but they know what they're getting into and they put up extra security on their properties to deal with the issues that they deal yeah, with. Yeah, unfortunately, we live in a, a relatively large city and we're going to have socioeconomic, socioeconomic problems like that. And thankfully, we have charities and government that can deal with that through those institutions we were talking about. Now, those those places have to be somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody ever wants them in their backyard, NIMBY, right? You don't want that safe injection site in your community, but they have to be somewhere in the city to cater to these people who have, you know, certain problems. And like, as I said, when he was talking about Forest Lawn, if you're going to buy a rental property in Forest Lawn, you have to be aware of where these things are and the problems that these things can bring, and you have to deal with them as a landlord. So as long as you know up front and you're experienced in that, by all means, we'll help you buy a property there. But if you're brand new to the game and you've never rented a property before, you're nervous around tenants, there's no way we're going to put you in a community that has that type of interest. Yeah, there's no way we're going to do it. Um, and because we've seen what happens to him. Yeah. We've seen squatters go into properties, when rent properties. We've seen druggies use the properties. And we've seen illegal things happening on our, our investors' properties. So... You have to be able to know and understand and deal with those problems when they come up. And that's why we're like, no, we're not going to buy you in that area. We could do way, way better in other areas. And that's the best thing about this presentation tonight. We're going to go through all of the quadrants, all of the communities, so we can tell you what we think. Um, and once again, please do keep in mind, there's different investors in different price ranges. If you're putting 20% down on a property, that there alone 
opened you up to other areas where there's properties that we love that have multiple exit strategies. So properties that have multiple exit strategies are properties in areas that have 50 foot lots and that you could knock down and build maybe a fourplex or a duplex or a side-by-side -side infill. Those properties are ideal and they appreciate more just because of land value um, going up because builders come in and knock down those houses and build those sorts of things. So if you're starting off and doing what we call house hacking uh, or a move up program and putting 5% down and moving into the property, well then Tim, you're limited maybe to a townhouse or to a condo or even a half duplex or even a small house. So Yeah, because the numbers have to work for the rent that you're gonna get to be cash flow positive. Your rent has to cover your expenses. And if the property price is too high and your mortgage price, or sorry, your mortgage amount is very, very high, makes your payment high, there's no way you're gonna cash flow. So that property doesn't work. Yeah, so so when it comes down to an individual, and that's what Tim was talking about, a custom plan for our investors, we really have to work out what you can afford. We have clients that come to us and we say, you know what, you should actually rent out your current house because current rents would cover your costs and you should upgrade your house because this is the perfect time to get into that market. Yeah. So it's everyone's different. So, uh, and if anyone has any questions throughout the presentation, um, feel free to throw it in the chat. We, we are monitoring it. We will get back. Um, to that question and we're happy to answer it tonight and it could be about any community in calgary yeah so we're going to jump or we're going to start right off with um the deep south so we'll start south and we'll work our way north uh talking about the communities in the areas in the city uh we've highlighted a few communities here that are in the deep south what you can see in the top line there is the city of calgary's numbers now i'll go over those numbers and they're they're sort of a baseline point that we compare everything to. So last year in Calgary, there were 29,672 residential sales. Now this is all residential. So it's single family homes, townhouses and apartments and duplexes. Um, the year over year increase in the number of sales was 7%. So that's 2022 over 2021. The average days on market was 30 days, which is a nice round number. We always love that. Tell someone you put their house on the market, it'll be sold in one month. And the average price, now this is across all housing types in Calgary, was 516885 That is quite a bit above what it was, say, even 2015 when the oil price crashed. And that was a 4.9% increase over 2021. Now, 2021, we saw an 8% increase over 2020. So anybody who's owned property for the last two years has seen an increase of about 13%. Now, if you see an increase in an investment of 13% over two years, especially if it's leveraged money, that's a great return right there. That doesn't even include the mortgage pay down and it doesn't include the cash flow. Okay, mm -hmm. so those are the base numbers that we're going to go over. And the deep south we look at as anything south of what, say, the ring road back, the, you know, on the, on the east side. Mm -hmm. Places like Mackenzie Town, Mackenzie Lake, New Brighton, Copperfield, and then south of, of the Ring Road, Copperfield, Mahogany, Auburn Bay. On the west side, we're looking at Legacy, Silverado, Whoa. Walden, things like And the newer communities, there's Belmont and other communities that there's very few homes in them now, but that's what we call the deep south. Mm -hmm. And before we get started in the numbers and the communities, we used to steer people away from that because there was no infrastructure down there. Once that hospital went down there um, in Auburn Bay, Seton, <laughs> um, all kinds of infrastructure went in around there. Now there's restaurants and grocery stores and pubs and everything down there. Yeah. And on the other side as well, there's a high school in Legacy right now. There's shopping, you know, there's uh, shopping centers down there. So all the infrastructure is in there now. And you know what? It's new. So um hats off to the communities down there now we were staying away and uh, we, we just want to tell everybody out there that if you buy in newer communities now we're going to talk about some communities that are new within the city but if you're on the outskirt of the city in newer communities in the northeast in the south it is very very risky because what happens is 
developers are building and they continuously build and build and build. And we seen a few years ago, not even that long ago, starter homes come on in these areas, all of these areas, Mahogany, Seton, Legacy, Walden, starter homes were coming on for the four, 420,000 range. Uh, you get a, you, I don't even think you had a garage with that in. No. Nope. Uh, and not a finished basement. And there was so much supply, and it's happening in the Northeast right now. There was so much supply that the market actually came all the way down to 360,000. It was hard to get people renting down there because there was no infrastructure. So we just sold one of our clients that bought pre, pre construction on a condo near the hospital, Tim. And they sold this last year um, because the property prices came all the way up. So, Tim, that was a long, long time hold. That was like a four, four year, four or five years, four or five years. So we don't like it to be that long. Um, and what happened with that condo? They bought it. It went down in value. They built thousands of condos around there. And then guess what? Last year, condos went up in, in price and then our client offloaded. So. It can be risky in outer areas, but now these areas, Seton, as Tim is saying, Mahogany, they're not outer areas. They're building further south of there. And guess what? Young people love new. And young people, when they love new, they're prepared to pay for it. So a lot of these smaller properties down there, especially townhouses, we are loving. We've been hitting some of these communities with townhouses. We can tell you a two-bedroom, two-bath, um, 11 to 1200 square foot townhouse. Normally these things come with a tandem uh, double car garage. Um, some come with singles. They rent these days for around $2,100. So if you could run your numbers and make sure they cash flow, the best thing about these, um, these new townhouses is, is that they built shopping areas like the ones down in Wallington we've been getting, the multicolor ones. There's a shopping plaza across the road. It's got a brewery. It's got uh, eateries. It's got Stobies. And Stobies. Um, you could actually walk across the road, and tenants really, really look at this. And first time home buyers, we're we're getting young kids in there that are going in renting renting these properties out. And then our plan is is to move them out of there after a year, and then go do it again somewhere else on another property. So, and at the same time, making sure that those numbers. Um, work and the property cash flows. One property type that I want to talk about in the deep south there is those four or five story walk up condo buildings where if you drive down by the hospital, there's it seems to look like there's hundreds of them, but there's many, many, many of those buildings all around those communities down there Legacy, Walden, um, Seton, there's Rangey, which is the next community to the southeast of Seton. There are many, many, many of those things. And if that's your price range, because you can pick up condos in there for the low 200s. If that's your price range, what you have to do when you're buying one is buy something with some sort of wow factor. Buy one on the top floor with a view south or with the view of the mountains. Buy one on the bottom floor that you can walk, someone can walk out and walk their dog to a park. It has to have some sort of wow factor if you want to get premium rents in a condo building like that. You can't be looking across the road at another condo building or across the lane at a whole row of condo buildings. <laughs> if that's your price range, find a condo building with a wow factor. Yeah. A couple of things to watch out for down in the south is how close you are to the ring road. Uh, we've been to properties where we're looking out the window of boom, it's right there. Or how close you are to the dump. There's a number of dumps down that way. Yeah, there's the, the composting facility that the city of Calgary has where all your green bin goes. It's right outside of New Brighton, and there's also the Shepherd Landfill. So, so you got to you got to keep an eye on that. And the best thing about the Deep South, or or even in the Deep North, any newer communities, what will eventually happen is, especially on the on the more expensive homes, property uh, construction costs have gone through the roof. So to build the same product, we've seen this out in Elbow Valley and in Aspen. We did a lot of upgrading uh, last year for our clients into bigger homes because to go build that same product brand new, uh, and we're talking 3,000 square foot homes, big or bigger, um, to go build that same product right now, the costs were through the roof and you could get huge discount on properties that have been around for 10, 15 years. Yes, you may have to do some updating, um, to those homes, but you're paying way less to get in. And we just see those prices 
that in these communities, especially like Mackenzie Town, you can get some great deals in there because they're older homes. And guess what? Mackenzie Town is closer, closer into the city than some of these newer communities that are way down there. So, so we're going to continue to see growth in these areas, which is great. Okay, moving on to the next one, um, the south part of the city, we look at this as south of, say, Glenmore Trail, all the way down to Fish Creek Park. So that's what we consider south. Realistically, any community in there is less than a 20 minute drive downtown. So these communities, they're a little bit older. They've probably built from the 60s until the late 80s. So you're gonna get a little bit of an older product. But what we like about it is there's the traditional bungalows in there. A little bungalow on a 50 foot lot, say a thousand to 1200 square feet. Um, three bedrooms up, two down, ideal for suiting. And tons and tons of these things have illegal suites in them. And we put tons of our clients into them and they've legalized those basement suites and got top dollar rents because it's a legal basement suite. Yeah, and we've seen in areas like Acadia and Haysboro, great for flipping. We did a flip with our clients last year uh, in Haysboro and you know the, the top end of a flip, Tim, we've seen some of the prices hit close to a million dollars in some of these communities and you can get grandma's house for 600,000. So the spread is huge. And when you're flipping a house, you need that spread. Like we always look, Tim, for a spread of at least two to $250,000. And that's how we know our clients are going to make money. Uh, the other things about some of these communities, every single one of them offers something. Like you look at Minaport, it's got the lake. You look at Clean Queensland and Canyon Meadows, it's near Fish Creek Park. I mean, all of these things, and Tim, can you manage, you got a beauty for the kid from San Francisco uh, last year. Yeah. And it was huge that, like, that, that bungalow must have been like 13, you know, I think it was 1,400 square, square feet. 1,400 square foot bungalow for 520,000. Yeah, a legally suited basement. Yeah, so so some of these communities, and that's what you got to look out for, is, is what you're getting for your bang for your buck. And, and, and we looked at that property in Kenya Meadows and we just couldn't say no. Uh, when we look at Braveside and Cedar Bray and that whole west side, southwest side, um, even areas like Evergreen, Tim, we, we're looking to those areas now um, for a plus because they're still affordable. You can get the smaller homes that will rent out and cover costs. But the best thing that's going on with the west side there is the Tazo development, Tim. Yeah. So that the Taza development is it straight it stretches from the Indian or sorry from the casino the Great Eagle Casino all the way down to 22x um, all along the Indian Reserve there just outside of the city the Tsutsina Reserve there's going to be commercial development there's going to be residential development there's going to be light industrial all kinds of stuff that's going in there. Now, everybody's probably been down or driven by that Costco that's down there. Well, there's car dealerships going in. There's other stores going in there. So that development, it's probably a 25-year build-out because it's such a massive, massive area. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see so much money go into developing that thing there. Any community that's around it, just inside the city, is going to be prime, prime rental property. Yeah, and not only that, if you look at the exit from Bragg Creek on, on the Stony Trail, and you come all the way up to Glenmore on, on that Stony Trail stretch, it's less than 10 minutes. Yeah. It may be eight minutes to get from one end to the other. So what Tim is talking about is three different developments going on within this Tazo uh, development. And, and when you have this so close to where you're living, it just makes it that more um, desirable for people and especially for tenants. So uh, we see it happening. It's, take, it's taken a little longer than we thought, um, but it's definitely from what we see, that whole quadrant or that whole pocket of the city is going to be easy to rent out properties and it's going to help increase prices just because of that development and using that new standing uh, ring road on that side of the city. Yeah, and, it, and it's a great partnership between the city and the Tsutsina band. Um, it's sort of a, a mutual beneficial project so that they can benefit from all the people in Calgary going and purchasing stuff at those stores, keeping them in business, and it raises their standard of living there. 
And you know, it, it helps all the way around. So we're really, really bullish on that development and the communities that are right around that development. So Catherine's asking about Bogdan. I know someone said we had an echo. I don't think we can fix the echo team. That's gonna have to stick yeah. with it right now. Does everybody get the echo? If someone doesn't, can you put it in the chat? <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Um, we're quite happy to talk about Ogden. Um, we have basically been hitting Ogden very, very hard yeah. in the last team, the last six two years. months, yeah, yeah, two years, the last two years. So, uh, the reason why we started investing in there first off, you get great lots, second, you can get anywhere in the city, you have Glenmore Trail. You have Stony Trail on the east side. Um, Deerfoot connects there. Like you can get anywhere in the city. And then you have the light rail system going down there eventually. And you get great tenants who work in the industrial areas on the east side of town. Now, these guys and gals that are out there working in these warehouses, working in these industrial areas, they don't want to live, you know, an hour's drive away from where they work. So they live in Ogden, they rent places in Ogden, they rent the basement suites, the main floors, whole houses, and they're only a short drive to where they work in the industrial area. Mm -hmm. They're all great tenants, they make a ton of money. Um, we've got clients that have properties in there and these guys are long-term tenants. Yeah. They're actually lifetime tenants because they never buy a house, but they always, always rent for long-term. And if you can get one of these tenants in your Ogden house, you're set. Yeah, and what's going on in Ogden, same as Acadia, Fairview, Haysboro, um, there's infills going in. They're knocking down these homes and they're building infills. So when you see that, the community is turning, um, which we love. We keep an eye on that. Uh, the key in these areas is just to get great tenants. Uh, the rents, I have to tell you guys, rents are going through the roof in Calgary. And where the first estate is not, not to gouge uh, your tenants, you know, be fair, but we're just seeing incredible amounts that people are getting and the numbers really work. Even with interest rates going up, uh, every property we bought in Ogden or any of these areas this year have cash flow. Um, so is it possible? It's definitely possible. Uh, and the other thing is, if, you know, it, it depends where you're at, Tim, with your investing um, plan. Like, what stage you're at? Are you looking to maybe flip? And if you haven't uh, flipped before and you're working with us, we're the first people to tell you that you should buy a property and move into it and take your time and renovate it while you live in it. Maybe sweep the basement and, and, and then renovate a room at a time yeah. because that way it takes the pressure off and you can see if you really like uh, renovating or not. But some of these communities, you could hit definitely a home running. Um, and, and we're even seeing as far as Tim in Queensland, yeah. we're seeing homes come in there, uh, be renovated that were bought for 400 and selling for 550. So even 600. Even 600. Yeah. So that's even in, in Queensland. And you can see some of these uh, growth rates here. I'm looking at Haysboro at minus 1%. And I'll tell you why Haysboro is probably minus 1%. It's probably because the high-end properties in Haysboro, those high-end prices have come and, down a little and bit. And the family in there. What's included in Haysboro is the London development. That's actually part of the Haysboro community, even though it's on the other side of the tracks. Plus, along the tracks, there's some lower-income mm -hmm. uh, condos. And then there's that Hays Farm development, which is there's probably close to a mm -hmm. thousands of units in there. That's all really, really low priced inventory that's included in that price so that have so yeah. those units haven't come up yet okay. and we need to explain in different communities like you look at Haysboro there's a difference between east uh, of Elbow Drive in Haysboro to west of Elbow Drive in Haysboro and same as Fairview if you're backing on to uh, light industrial there's a difference in your pricing than if you're in Fairview on, you know, a nice quiet street. So we need to stress that. Uh, and, and Tim was showing you the numbers just before, Tim. The average in the city was 516,000. Our job as realtors, we've always said this, that our average should be around 650,000. Okay, and you might be sitting there saying, well, how do these guys say that? Well, we know that the national average today is 632,000 and Calgary is 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 tipped to get up to that average. We don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know if it's going to be this year, next year, but we know it's coming and we feel it's going to be in the next three years. And our job as realtors is really, really simple. It's to find these communities that are going to get you there faster and that are going to rent out to cover your costs so you can hold on to this property and keep investing. Yeah. So we're going to bang out some of these questions there. Is it rare to see a fourplex 
to sixplex, and I'm interested in those. Fourplexes and sixplexes um, are rare in Calgary. If you look on the MLS right now, you'll probably see half a dozen that are for sale. Very, very expensive. Everybody wants a premium for them. Um, if you can find one, that's a decent price. If we can find one, we jump on it for clients that want them. But in Calgary, that type of inventory is very, very rare. In Edmonton, um, Edmonton seems to be more blue collar. There are way more fourplexes, sixplexes, eightplexes. Edmonton just seemed to build way more of those back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Calgary didn't build enough of those. Mm -hmm. So they're very rare and they're very expensive. Um, Spencer asks about Southwood. Southwood is similar to, to Haysboro. On the west side of Elbow Drive, very desirable real estate. On the east side, you have to find a good pocket. Along the tracks, the LRT tracks, um, some of those, mm -hmm. the housing down there, maybe not so desirable. Yeah, but Spencer, just quickly on Southwood, you have those beautiful streets with the massive trees, and Southwood is a prime example of a spillover suburb. And when we say spillover suburb, Tim, come backwards for me from Haysboro towards the city. You got Britannia, you got Mail and Hyde. What else do so you have in there? From Haysboro, you got Windsor Park and yep. then um, Bel Air. Uh, and then you got Metalock Park, Metalock Park, Park, Chinook, Chinook Park, and then you got. Britannia, and then you got Alboya and Mission, and yeah, you know. so that's getting too expensive. But as you can see, what Tim is saying, you know, you're going from from two million dollar properties to one million dollar properties to eight hundred thousand dollar properties in Haysboro that are brand new, renovated. And then guess what? Guess what's next? It's Southwood. So, and then you got the sea train going through there. It's just going to happen, um, and it's a safe bet. Southwood is awesome. Oak Ridge. Tim, Oak Ridge is another one that's a state home. So, you know, Oak Ridge, it's, it's hard to find cash flowing properties because it's so expensive. There are pockets in there where you can find the bungalows that are ideal for suiting, but Oak Ridge has almost priced itself out, out of what we can buy uh, to make it cash flow. Um, executive rentals, if you see a renovated home, it would work, but Oak Ridge is almost at that level where it's too high for it. Yeah, and Oak Ridge itself, um, there's not a lot of flips going in in there. Like there, there are people updating their homes, but they live there forever. Yeah. They, people yeah. never sell. So even for a flip, we would be hesitant to go and flip a property in Oak Ridge just because they don't have a proven track record. Whereas you go in Haysboro, you can pull out six calls and you know exactly where you're going to land when you go to sell. Um, and the whole thing about that is not speculating. If you are going to buy an Oak Ridge, you would buy there for your family home. You would upgrade the home to where you like it. And uh, for a rental, it's that community doesn't really suit that very much. Um, just want to stress that. Okay. So moving a little bit further north, we'll do the west side. So when we say west communities, um, we're talking anything west of, say, Rothschild Trail, because if you move further in, the it, it, the properties are just too expensive. They don't really work as rentals. Condos maybe, or townhouses maybe, but the, the real estate is very, very expensive as you get closer to downtown. But on the west side of Rothschild Trail, that's when we start to get into some communities that work, like uh, Ross Carrick, mm -hmm. Westgate, um, the Glens. The Glens. And then going across Sarthi Trail to Strathcona and Coach Hill. So if you are looking for a flip property, I look at these graphs and I'm like, wow. You, you get Glamorgan at 6.8% and you get Glenbrook and Glendale that are down. And Tim was explaining today that uh, showing me this graph and explaining, well, how much multifamily is in yeah. uh, the Glen. And that's because on the major roads through there, Richmond Road would be one, 37th Street would be another, um, along Sarthi, it's all condos. Yeah. So you got to keep an eye on that, but there is some hidden gems in there. You've got some beautiful parks. You've got Optimus Park. You've got million dollar homes around Optimus Park, uh, and there's various parks along there. We we did a renovation for a client uh, Glendale. in Glendale. Uh, I mean, you're so close to downtown. You're so so close. I think he got in for for uh, he got in for five hundred ten thousand. This was very early last year. Well, that and was like no, I was talking about the Glendale one by the hockey rink. Yeah. Oh, that was that one. Oh, that was that one. Yeah, no, I'm talking about the young guy who was a renovator and okay. like that. Anyway, and he moved into it as a family home, and that home will be worth eight, nine hundred thousand dollars when he goes to sell it. So there, there's some great deals in there, and you still look at some of the affordability in these areas. 
um, you could still make it work if you had a suited property. So uh, you definitely want to look at that. Um, and you look up on the west side, I mean, it's hard to buy in that price range um, in Strathcona, those areas for rental properties. But if you're looking to upgrade your home, we've always said it in Coach Hill, there's tremendous value. You can get massive, massive homes, close to 3,000 square feet, under a million dollars. Yes, they need a lot of renovations. But when you have the same square footage in communities around there, like Aspen, uh, West Springs, those homes for that square footage sell above 1.5 million. So there's a massive difference in spread there on what a renovated in, in that pocket of the city would be. And so it's all about finding that right home and determining what you're going to do with it. Yeah, someone asked about Shaganapi. Shaganapi is one of those communities that's a little too close in. The properties there, um, unless you're along one of the major arteries like Crochelle Trail, they're very, very expensive mm -hmm. in Shaganapi. So it's a great place for renovation. What we're seeing is uh, developers are going in there just knocking the houses down, putting up all kinds of infills. That's what that community is good for. You can see it, just drive up 37, or sorry, drive up Boat Trail, Boat Trail, Boat Trail and you'll see you know, rows of infills. Yeah. And and the what's nice about a place like Shaganapi, if you go up Boat Trail, they're allowing, I've seen a developer, we actually know the developer who did it. He actually didn't build a fourplex, he put a fiveplex on. Oh, yeah. So the rents, he put a fiveplex on, you'll see it, it's across the road from Shaganapi train station. He put a fiveplex up, they look like townhouses, but each one has a suite in the basement. The rents were through the roof. I think each base five times um, $1,200 for each basement suite. And then upstairs was renting, they were like two, two they were townhouses. Um, they were roughly renting for $2,000 each. So the rents were just through the roof. Um, and for builders out there, it's really, really worth it at the end yeah. of the day, building something like that. And we just want to stress that when you get into places like Chaganapi or Kalani or out the door, because the builders are going in, they're building, they're buying those lots for like 700,000 now. They're knocking them down, building fourplexes. And those fourplexes that they're building, Tim, they're still in the 600 to $650,000 range when they go to sell them. So you just have to run your numbers to see if, if it works. For yeah, them. so one more in the chat here, touch on Silverado and Brattlewood. Silverado, again, most of that community is too high priced, but there are townhouses in there that we were looking at earlier this year. Um, they would make great rentals. And there are a few starter homes there in there. If you can get them at a good price, they would be a great rental. The lots are not big enough to uh, really legally sweep places because there's not enough places to park. Mm -hmm. um, Bridalwood, great community. We're actually going to be looking quite a bit at Bridalwood this year because it has a lot of the starter homes. And there are a lot of illegal suites in there. If they come on the market, we'll be looking at them and we'll definitely be shopping them to our clients. So those are two good communities. Silver, Silverado, a little too high priced. Bridalwood is a great community to have rented. Yeah, very good. Bridalwood, Evergreen, all yeah. in that pocket there. Okay, so moving further north, we'll go to the Northwest communities. Um, we love this area going north along Crowchild Trail, probably starting at Brentwood, Charleswood, and then all the way north to Tuscany, Royal Oak, Rocky Ridge. Yeah. Um, they have great... Great, great rental properties because you have everything up there. You've got the University of Calgary. You've got the Children's Hospital. You've got uh, the Foothills Hospital. You've got SAFE. There's tons and tons of employment centers up there. The LRT line runs right along Crowchell all the way to Tuscany. Um, these properties in there make great, great rental properties. Great flips going on in uh, Brentwood, Charleswood. It's just a, a really, really desirable place to invest along there. Our issue with it is it's getting very expensive. Yeah, I mean, we've got clients who, I think we just did one over Christmas, uh, the birth strategy, yeah. that was in Citadel? Yeah, Citadel. Arbor Lake. Arbor Lake, that was in Arbor Lake. He did the birth strategy on a condo. Yeah, on a condo, which we, we found amazing. And people were asking us, can you make money in the market right now? He did it over Christmas. So what he did, uh, a, a two bedroom unit. So he bought a one bedroom unit. He renovated it and then he had it appraised and he refinanced it and he pulled 40k out of it. That's the one he yeah. So, so yeah, so he already did one in the complex. That's right. He yeah. he he bought a one bedroom, um, renovated it. I saw the renovations. The renovations cost about 45k um to do the whole unit. We're talking bathroom, kitchen, flooring, paint, everything. Um, new appliances, it looked fantastic. 
Uh, both units, Tim, were they on the top floor? I can't remember. Oh, it's one floor below, third floor. Third floor. Uh, so this is a four-story building. It's right next to the shopping centre there. What would that shopping centre be called? Nose. No, it's not called Nose Hill. Crowfoot. Crowfoot. Crowfoot Crossing. It's busy and crazy there. But you got the C train there. You got all the shopping. You can walk to the shopping. Um, so he refinanced his money out, and then over Christmas he bought a he bought another unit, but a two bedroom unit this time, original condition. He got in for one hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Um, and now, and now he's going to do the same thing, and it should be worth about two hundred and fifty to two hundred sixty thousand yeah, dollars. Because you have the one bedroom one appraised for, I think it was two hundred and sixty five. So yeah. he bought that for one ninety, put his thirty in there, appraised for two sixty five, and he pulled his money out. Yeah. So he's going to do it again, but probably for more money because he's bought a two bedroom unit. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Put 30k in the first one, 45k in the next one, and he's going to burr it, which means he's going to he's going to renovate it, uh, refinance it, and then he's going to rent it out and get his money and then repeat. So that's a great strategy. Okay, anybody who wants to watch specific areas for suite of properties to come on, Silver Springs, Tuscany, and Ranchland, watch those three. If you live up there and you want to buy rental properties up there, those three properties. If you can get properties in the the sweet spot range, anywhere from you know, 380 to 525, those are the places to watch. So if those are the only three communities you want to watch in the Northwest, watch those three communities. Yeah, and you know what? Um, Jim's got here, Brentwood, Childhood, those kind of areas around the University Hospital. You can't go wrong. The other thing we really want to talk about is the University District. They've put in this whole development. I mean, there was a skating rink they put in there over the Christmas period. It's still there now, I think, Tim. And what's great about that community, it's walkable. You can walk to get an ice cream or a pizza. The hospital's just there. You can live there and enjoy your community. And guess what? People in the spillover communities around there are going there to enjoy themselves. So that's just going to enhance the whole that whole pocket yeah. of the Northwest. Now, one thing I just wanted to quickly say, especially about we were just talking about areas like Shaganapi and Altador and Kalani, and here's another two that are, or another three that are super expensive, Dalhousie, Grantwood, Charleswood. Uh, there's another one, Rosemont, that's in there, Tim. Uh, Collingwood's another one. There's a whole bunch. And so these areas of, we used to invest there 20 years ago. Like I owned in Collingwood and stuff like that. Now it's too expensive to cash flow, but there is a little segment that isn't in all of these, what we call blue chip communities. And that is investing in half duplexes. So if we are investing in half duplexes, we like it because you normally get these properties under 450,000. You can renovate them to cash flow. You can make them look good. You can legalize them. And what we love about the strategy of the half duplex is that you have the potential of buying the other side. And if you can own one side, control it today, cash flow, be happy, and then eventually get that other side, you hit a home run all day long. You eventually own a fourplex, a legal fourplex, and they're very, very hard to come by, as Tim said. Um, but that is the potential. And then you have the potential of owning a huge, massive lot in a blue chip property that you could build your dream home on. You could knock down, you could build a brand new fourplex or a fiveplex or a sixplex on. There's so many possibilities of what you could do, and we love doing that for our clients. Okay, we're going to move along. The north communities, we call these ones north. Go north of downtown, straight up Center Street or Fourth Street or Edmonton Trail. Um, the communities along there, we love these communities. Thorncliffe, Huntington Hills, Beddington Heights, Winston Heights. They're all great rental communities. We've put a ton of clients in there over the last five to 10 years. Um, there's a question about Hidden Valley. That's another one that's just north of uh, Nose Hill. Um, that's another one that would be in this price range, in this uh, rental range. Um, they're all great properties in there. They still have the older bungalows. Some of them, like Winston Heights, they're 60 foot lots. Mm -hmm. um, what was the one community that we were putting tons of people in, Nico? And now it's. Uh, yeah. It's like Anyways, cool. there's communities in there. Highwood. Yeah. Highwood's a community where we were putting tons of people in there, and now it's too expensive. You're paying minimum. Five seventy five, six hundred thousand for a decent lot in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's just priced itself right out of. So, uh, sweet spot. yeah. So what Tim is saying once again, 
is spill over some of those. We get emailed every day, what about this community? Or what about this property? And, and our job is to make you the most money. It's as simple as that. And, and so we're not afraid to say no, but when you look at the list here, when you come from downtown, you know, you've got Sunnyside and then you've got Capitol Hill, you've got Mount Pleasant, you've got Tuxedo. I mean, all of these areas are a million dollar plus areas, right? So, so where are people, where are the masses that have the affordability? And you have to understand this, the affordability has come down now. People that could afford $450,000 last year on a mortgage, because of the interest rates, that's come down all the way to 350000 So what's that mean for Calgary? What it means is that the masses are going to be forced to go into townhouses. They're going to be forced to go into condos, which we're going to talk about shortly. Or, you know what, they're going to buy the half duplexes. So we see that that long end of the market, it's going to go up, even though the, market, even though the stats say 3%. You guys out there as investors have to understand there's different segments of the market that you can take advantage of and, and maximize uh, your appreciation this year and next year. And so these areas, they provide that. Each one of these areas, if you think about it, the communities before them, and even in Winston Heights, Tim, there's, there's infills going in there now that are 900,000. Maybe sold one 880,000 last year. Highland Park, Highland Park is a different, it's a different cat. And we have to tell you why. Highland Park has Center Street going through it. On the east side of Center Street, down below, it's very light industrial. Actually, there is some um, crime going on down in there um, that we keep an eye on. So we don't love it as much. But the other side of Highland Park, Tim, uh, where the golf course is, and they're going to do a redevelopment in there, People who own on that side are going to reap the rewards. Yeah. So those are some great communities. Um, we'll move to the next slide. Far north communities. This is everything that's you know really far north of Noah's Hill, even north of Stony Trail up there, all those newer communities. You can look at the numbers here. They've all the year-over-year -year price gains have been huge. Now, the reason for that in these newer communities way up there is because to buy something brand new, because of the cost of building went so high. The resale properties had these great, these great uh, increases. You look at it: seventeen percent in Harvest Hills, twenty percent in Coventry Hills, eighteen in Livingston, thirty-two in Carrington. Now these are resale homes; these are not the brand new homes that the builders sell. So you're seeing these big increases because these resales are trying to catch up to the to the new builds. The new builds are so expensive now. You can buy a, a standard fifteen, sixteen hundred square foot two story uh, with a no garage no fence, no landscaping, and you're still paying five, 525 for it. Yeah, and so one thing about what developers are doing in the newer communities, they're offering rental guarantees, and we need to stress that it is very risky buying a property with a rental guarantee. What the developers are doing, first of all, they're factoring that rental guarantee amount into your purchase price, so you're paying for it up front, okay? And then secondly, they're giving you that rental guarantee because it's going to be very hard to rent these properties out. I mean, the 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 to, to actually rent one of these basically to it frustrates me because I see uh, out of towners uh, people from Ontario buying these properties, and we seen a property this year in in Redstone sell three times in less than three months. And it went, I think it went, it started off at 560 and then it went to 580, then it went to 600 and then it went to 620. And the last person holding the bag, um, now that same property has come down to, I think, 570 where it always was. Yeah. So you've got to be very, very careful of what you're buying out there. And it's simply because of supply and demand. They're going to keep building out there. There's so much land out there um, and they're building multifamily. Uh, a lot of that around there. So you need to understand what's going on in that community. Yeah. And then look, the number of sales on Panorama Hills, 553 sales last year. That's one of the busiest communities that and Coventry Hills. There's a, a lot of turnover in those communities because people buy this, the, the townhouse or the condo and then they love the community. So then they move into the half duplex. And then they move into the starter home and then they move into the bigger estate homes. So people will buy and sell within that same community many, many times. And the same thing with renters. They'll start renting a condo in Panorama Hills. 
Then once they get a family, whatever, they'll move out and they'll start renting a single family home or a main floor. So those types of communities where you see a lot of sales, there's a lot of turnover, people moving up. It'll also happen with the tenants. So they're very, very desirable for tenants as well as homeowners. Yeah. And just quickly, I know Avenue Magazine, they vote the best communities in in Calgary. And, 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 and just keep an eye on that. If you're following our Facebook page, um, we always post it and we post things on there to help you understand the market. And if, if a city, if a, sorry, if a community is named Community of the Year, I know Panorama Hills was one year. I know Tuscany was one year. I know Mackenzie Town was one year. If they're named Community of the Year, it means that, you know what, there's a wow factor there. People like living there. There must be good shopping, schools, transportation. Um, and all of those factors help you become successful landlords. So keep an eye on that. And the closer you can invest in and around these communities, um, the easier your life as an investor will be. Okay, so moving on, we'll look at the Northeast communities. What we're seeing is a lot of investors, they're asking to go into the Northeast because of the affordability of yeah. it. If you look at the average prices on these, the top five or six of these communities, you're still in the 300,000 range for the average price. Now we've been buying half duplexes up there, um, legally suited half duplexes for around 400,000. Yeah, no, you know what? The North Beast is going to boom, okay? Especially these older communities. Yeah. And, and there's, there's one reason, it comes down to affordability. People, and this happened to me when we first got in the market many, many years ago, uh, I own properties in the Northeast and the reason being is that what happens in Calgary is the west side of Deerfoot just gets too expensive. Like we couldn't even find properties, good, decent properties at one stage under 600,000. We're talking detached homes on the west side of Deerfoot. And at the same time, in the northeast, there's areas that we we're buying for 360,000. So, um, What's going to happen to the Northeast is going to continue to go up. Uh, you have the C train that runs down 30, is it 33rd, 36? I can't 36. 36. Um, you have all the shopping amenities that are off 36. You've got Sunridge Mall. You've got the airport up there. You've got the big hospital. So you have all of these locations where people can work. They can go shopping. They can go to school. Um, and then guess what? The C train can get you downtown in 12 to 15 minutes. Yeah. And you're starting to see, if you look at the right hand column, all of these all of these communities are starting to see their, their sales average average sales price increase year over year. They were sort of floundering, not really increasing, decreasing after the oil crash in 2015. Um, you're starting to see that come back now because of the affordability factor. People who are in that price range, 350 to 450 range, they can buy a very, very nice house on a very big lot in one of these communities like Whitemore or Runner mm -hmm. or Marlboro. Um, even places like Albert Park, there's patches in there that you don't want to go, but that just overlooks uh, downtown, right by Mac Bell Arena there, there are pockets in there that, you know, you can get a very, very decently priced home. Yeah, and one thing we want to explain, Tim and I always like to be hugging the sea trend line. So within, you know, uh, um, you know, not... And 15 minute walk. Yeah, we would love that. But guess what's happening on the east side of the northeast? They build, they build a Costco. They've got a new Walmart super center. They've got, I think it's called South Point Shopping. They've got a whole east section. Hills. East Hills, that's what it's called, East, east Hills. And, and we know that all of the land between um, the city limits and um, Chestermere has been spoken for. So all of this new uh, whole new development, Belvedere going. Belvedere, yeah. So all of that land will be taken. And now if you do live up the back of, or on the east side of the northeast along Stony Trail, there's more and more amenities coming um, and it's going to be better and better and more desirable, yeah. which will increase prices. That community of Belvedere is actually one to watch in the next four or five years, because as it gets built out, it's still only 15 minutes from downtown down 17th Ave, and, or even quicker if you take uh, the number one in. That is a community to watch. Right now, there's almost nothing out there. There's a few houses that are being built, but you're gonna see in the next four or five years, that place is gonna just explode. There's gonna be all different housing types. There'll be townhouses, there'll be apartments, um, and there'll be a lot of single family homes, and a lot of them will be built with suites in the basement. So that's one to watch in the future.
Uh, moving along, we're pretty much done with the Calgary communities. So we'll look at the surrounding towns. Um, great places to invest. We put a lot of people in townhomes in Chestermere. Uh, we've had people do rent homes in Cochrane. We've got people with straight up rentals in Okotoks and Strathmore and even Langdon. Mm -hmm. So these surrounding towns, they're a little bit cheaper. Uh, the average price is there because there's a lot of estate homes as well. That's the average price for the whole city. So yeah, we did break it down by community in each in each one of those towns, but they're very, very desirable because they're it's small town living 20 minutes from Calgary. Yeah, you're 20 minutes away. Actually, you're 20 minutes from our office, which is right yeah. downtown, uh at the Chestermere, which is awesome. And you know what? We put a young family in Langdon um this year last year, Tim. Yeah. And 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 the reason why we did that is because building costs are going through the roof, and the secondhand homes in some of these outer communities. Uh, there's a great deal. I mean, our client team, I'm, you can't even talk about the upgrades this house came with. It came with everything you'd want. It had a, it had a dream garage, which was heated. It had a workshop. Uh, it came with a spa. The lot itself was absolutely massive. Like, we couldn't believe it. Um, and everything was updated in this home. And our clients actually lived in Canyon Meadows, and we moved them out there. They rented out. We got them to rent out their house, which is cash flowing. And they bought out in Langdon. And we know... When we revisit this next time we do this next year, um, that the 3.1% will be up when the others are yeah. this time next year because all of the new houses are going to start to sell and then that will just increase the values out there. Did you mention the multifamily in Langdon? There's very, very little multifamily yeah. in Langdon. Once they start building that out, then you're going to see that a lot more people move out there. Yeah. Uh, Max, we'll get to your question quickly. And if we did miss any other communities in there, just throw it in the chat. We will get to it. And we're happy to speak about any community at all. Um, but just quickly, Okotoks, we did a lot of business down there. You should check out our video on Crew TV. We interviewed a local down in Okotoks to give us the rundown uh, when we bought a place. But we bought this massive bungalow in what was that? What was that community? Sheep River. Sheep River, something like that. Anyway, uh, for a young guy last year, and the rents were through the roof. I and mean, the reason why the rents were through the roof, I mean, this guy was cash flowing seven, eight hundred dollars per month on his first rental property. And the reason being is that there's no rental properties in some of these areas. Yeah. So if there's no rental properties, the 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 prices that you're getting just for rents is, is I, I couldn't even I nearly fell over. Um, and so Okotoks people. Do and you get good tenants down there. Of course, you have to screen people. Uh, Chestermere, we have bought the most townhouses in Chestermere than any other realtor, I'm sure of it. Uh, and we just loved it because we saw Chestermere as a lifestyle community. Once again, you're 20 minutes from downtown, um, but you're on the lake, um, and you have you know, you have your shopping center. And we love a little pocket in there where you can walk to all of those amenities. Uh, and once again, rents are really, really good that those townhouses cash flow. And not only that, you get a newer product. Like the properties we're buying have a wow factor. They have stainless steel appliances. They have granite. They have hardwood. They have views of the lake. So if it has these things, you're going to have no problem renting them out. Um, Cochrane, you know what? It's always done well. Tim. Yeah, people love Cochrane because of the mountain views there. Um, it's a quick escape to the, to the mountains if you like skiing or hiking or camping. Um, it's very, very desirable. People just love it there. Yeah. So we'll get to them, some of these questions. Someone talked about Aaron Woods. I like Aaron Woods more than a lot of those communities out east there. I like it a lot more because it's got train tracks that cut it off from Forest Lawn. That's why I like Aaron Woods the most. Um, there's some great deals in there. There's some sweeter properties in there. But again, you got to pick the right pockets because there's a lot of industrial around there. And one thing about Aaron Woods, I've been in a lot of sweeter properties there. And there's a lot of new to Canada uh, immigrants living in Aaron Woods. And, you know, as we were saying earlier in the in the webinar, there's going to be more people moving here. So all of those properties, all those areas are going to be great cash flowing properties because that's the only place where people can afford that are earning, you know, in a certain, uh, uh, what do you say, Tim, in a certain wage bracket. Yes. They're going to have to live somewhere. And you know what? There, there is some great suite of properties and that Aaron Woods is just going to continue to go up um, because of that. Yeah, okay. Diamond Valley, which is uh, Turner Valley and Black Diamond right. amalgamated. They're one city now. Yeah. Um, if you can 
buy a rental property in Diamond Valley, jump on it because all you have to do is look in Red Faster or even the local, you know, the Western Wheel, a paper that's down there. Um, try and find anything that's for rent in, the, in that city. There's nothing for rent in that city. So if you have a rental property in there, your rental rate will be comparable to what it is in the city, and the house price will probably be a hundred thousand less than what it's in the city. But again, then you have to commute out there to check on your rental property. So yeah, you know, it's up to you. It's better if you live down that way. We always say that your rental property should be pretty close because if they're not, and you have to travel all the way down, if you're living in Tuckney and have to travel to Camp Cranston to check on your rental property. Your days as an investor are going to be numbered. You don't want to invest too far away unless you're using a property manager, of course. Walk out based on rentals in Signal Hill. Um, if you can come across one, it's great. But your entrance price in Signal Hill for something that has a walkout basement, you're going to be in the six, seven hundred thousand. Yeah. So, so Sandra, if you're looking at a walkout basement rental in any area like Signal Hill, you're really, you're really. If you're going to augment your mortgage, yes, you're looking for a mortgage helper. So you're living upstairs, uh, or vice versa. We've seen, yeah. we've actually done this for clients where they'll live in the basement, and and um, we've actually seen this plenty of times. And and fair enough, if that's we we had one client live downtown. He was renting downtown in like a seven hundred square foot condo. Him and his wife and a baby, and we bought him a place in Tuscany to do exactly what you're talking about. And we thought he was going to move in upstairs. He moved in downstairs, legalized the basement. It was a walkout, legalized it, increased the value, rented out upstairs for twenty two hundred, which was covering all his costs. So whichever way you want to do it, but if you're if you're going to do that in a property over five hundred fifty six hundred thousand, um, you'd have to it'd have to be a mortgage helper because it's it's going to be hard to cash flow at the end of the day. Yeah. Cornerstone and Cityscape, they're exactly like Redstone and uh, Redstone and what was the other one up there? Yeah, we talked about Cityscape a bit. They're extreme uh, northeast, right at the corner of Stony Trail. Uh, great place for rentals. Again, um, stay away from the new builds that have legal suites. If you can get one on the resale market, you will do a lot better. But the price there, because a lot of it's new product, it's price itself right out of the cash flow sweet spot. So there, but you'll get great tenants up there. Next one, Boness and Montgomery. Yeah. Do you know, I think you missed the slide because I don't see it in here. Sure. Boness. I don't know. Oh, that, that should have been the Northwest. Oh, that should have been. So Boness is one of our go-to communities. We love what's going on in there. Um, we've got some awesome clients that live there. Uh, we just had clients buy a four-plex, uh, uh, Cole and Brett. Um, and Tim and I just went to see a property just over the holidays in their uh, foreclosure that's on there right now. What we love about Burness is that there's so much going on. They just put the new superstore in. They've got the new farmer's market. You've got Pascapoo Slopes, which is COP, um, a whole new development going in there with shopping. Uh, they're revitalizing COP as well, which we love. You've got the farmer's market. And not only that, they're building, they've built new infrastructure, the main road going through Burness. They've ripped it up. They've updated it. It just makes it that more appealing. And guess what? It's 10 to 12 minutes to downtown. You have major roads going in and out of there. You've got Sarsi, you've got the number one, and then you've got Stony. You can get anywhere in the city. And it's affordable. Um, we love it because, you know what, the hospital is five minutes away. The university is five minutes away. McMahon Stadium is just up on the hill. So there is a lot of bonuses to um, bonus. But you really have to screen your tent. Yeah. We can tell you that. And that's why when we're working with our clients, um, we actually want to be there to see who, who they're getting as tenants. And, and uh, it is turning around. So it's like Ogden. It's like uh, the same thing as Ogden. Yeah. Those two communities, we love them, but you have to know what you're doing um, to make it work. For sure. okay. I'm going to make an executive decision. We're going to finish the last two slides, which uh, deal with some prices. And then we'll get to all the questions once the presentation is done. Um, so moving on to the next slide, uh, downtown condos. So what we see here is in all of these areas in the downtown condos, we're finally starting to see price increases, which is great news for anybody who has a condo as a rental. But what we've been saying for the past five years is stay away from buying downtown condos. We've actually seen the market bottom out. So these average prices are about as low as they're gonna get. 
and they're finally starting to ride. If that's your price range, if that's your preference to own condos downtown as rental properties, now is the time to get in on it. Yeah. Um, you can get some very, very reasonably priced condos down here. Um, what you've got to watch out for is the condo fees. They can be too big. They can kill your cash flow. So you got to really pick building by building and find one with a condo fee that works for you. Yeah. So once again, with condos, you have to look at the condo fee um, and if it makes sense. And the condo, the condo market, there is only 900 condos on the market across all of Calgary right now. So there is only one way, and that is up for condos. I mean, we're not even where we were at back in 2008 with prices. People were buying in, in these buildings, the Chocolate Building, Union Square. We've got all these other buildings all around us. A two-bedroom condo back then was selling for 400, four, all the way up to 460,000. For a standard two-bedroom, two-bathroom, 1,000 square foot condo, we're nowhere near that right now. We're still 100 grand below where they once were, and the Calgary condo market is definitely, definitely, definitely coming back. But you have to make sure that you can make the numbers work. Does that mean you have to do an Airbnb on the property? Does that mean you have to do a rent to own so you increase um, how much money you're taking in so you can make the numbers work? We help you understand all of that, but we are very excited for the Calgary condo market finally coming back after 10 12 years. Yeah. So our last slide with the numbers on it is high-end homes in Calgary. All you have to do is check out the year-over-year -year increases. One thing that um, we do look at is year-over-year -year sales. The sales volume is down in every single one of these communities. The average price is up. And if you look at the days on market, the days on market are very, very, they're almost double, one and a half times to two times what the city average is. So what we've seen in this last year is, although the prices went up in these communities, fewer properties have sold and they've taken longer to sell. That's because of the economic uncertainty as you know, increase or sorry, interest rates start to rise, plus all of the political uncertainty. When you hear the rhetoric coming out of Ottawa and the talk about you know they're not supporting the oil industry, so these high end wage earners in the oil industry are sort of taking their time before they take the plunge to buy a one point five million dollar home. Yeah, what we love about uh, this segment of the market is that there's plenty of opportunity, there's plenty or there's great value. And people are going to catch on and it will take off again. We don't know when, but it was pretty healthy last year, Tim. And we're expecting it to be pretty much the same going forward. Yeah. And so another reason we have this slide in here is because it's a lot of our investors end goal. They start out doing, you know, the bird strategy or they start out doing these little flips or doing house hacking or a move up program. And when they're finished, our move up program, say they have four or five investment properties, their end goal is to own in one of these neighborhoods, and that's where they're going to settle and raise their family. So we look at this slide as some of the communities where some of our investors, they're, they're striving for, right? They want to live in these high-end communities, and they're going to use not only what they do as employment right now, but they're going to use their real estate holdings as a vehicle to get them there. Yeah, they're going to, eat, they're yeah. going to refinance, take the deposit, and put it down on a big home, and that's what we strive for all of our investors if that's their end goal. Um, we will get to the question at the end, we're just quickly going to go through this. Um, some major Calgary infrastructure projects coming up. We talked about the Tars of Development, uh, the BMO Centre downtown. All of these things, Tim, are just going to help propel Calgary. Um, there is no way prices are going to come down. People will ask us, a price, there is no way prices are going to come down. Um, we don't see them booming, but, but we just see continued growth, healthy uh, sustainable growth here in Calgary. Yeah, and you see all of this, these projects going on. You know, there's private money going in there. There's uh, government money going in there. With all of this spending going on in there, you know, they need employees to do all, all of these things. All of these projects are support for the growth of the city. And as the city grows with more immigration, um, we're going to need more housing and it's going to create demand for rental properties. And that's why we're in this game. That's what we help our clients do. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go to the next slide here. We will get to those questions. Just quickly, we're just going to recap um, our free ebook. It's on our website. It's in the chat. You can actually uh, press the link to CalgaryRealEstateWealth.com. You can download 1 Million Reasons to Buy Real Estate. It's a great read. It's not a long book at all. 
Uh, and you should read it if you think you want to get into investing in real estate. Uh, and we know we have realtors that do follow us sometimes online. We are looking at growing a team or if someone's thinking about getting into real estate uh, as a real estate agent, please reach out to us. The next thing we want to talk about is our book, Fearless Real Estate. This will cost you, it's 20 bucks online. Um, it's actually awesome because it actually gives you the stories that have changed our clients' lives. It's not all about us. Uh, we read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad about 23 years ago, something like that, 22 years ago. That changed our lives. But the difference between that book and this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad was a great story, but it didn't give you anything to get started. This will actually help you understand if real estate investing is for you. Yeah, we were talking about a lot of our clients and the communities that they bought in today. This book contains many many stories uh our clients buying all over the city doing all kinds of different strategies and it tells you about their successes whether they were doing a flip whether they were doing a buy and hold whether they were doing house hacking there's plenty of stories in here of people i'm sure just like you guys sitting out there they are coming from a similar life experience but they're having success with their real estate investment um goals so if you want to buy it it's great it'll you know give you some great reference points of where these people started and where they got to. Yeah, the next thing we want to talk about just quickly is our Fearless Real Estate Wealth Mastery Program. Uh, we've changed the price to $97 per month because we had a lot of people asking us where did the monthly um, fee go that they could do. We just didn't want to administrate it, but we got so many requests that we put it back on there. So it's only $97 per month. We never want to gouge people, uh, Tim, on these investment courses. This course, I could tell you that uh, we paid for a similar course, $17,000 for a similar course. And all the material that we learned that propelled us to where we are today is in this course. Not only that, we go through case studies and we show you how to actually move forward and make it successful. Um, we filter out the strategies that are nonsense and won't make you money. And we only have relevant strategies in there that you can do in any market right now. Yeah, like a lot of this course is very good at giving you all this material that you will never use. Uh, we don't believe in that. And uh, it's really working. And if you want to see how it's working for our clients, just go on to our crew TV. And then you can see what these people are doing. We've got people all ages, all stages of their lives. We've got single parents. We've got... Um, we've got doctors, we've got lawyers, we've got teachers, we've got all different people, we've got construction workers, um, just killing it in real estate and you could be doing it too. Yeah, so check out Crew TV and you can watch all of their stories. Um, finally, if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one interview with us, uh, just either email us, text us, call us. Email is actually the best, we'll be able to get back to you the quickest. Um, we'll give you our contact info on the next slide. But if you want to sit down and find out where you're at, where you want to go, if you just want to find out if you're really interested in real estate investing, we'll, by all means, we'll spend an hour with you explaining it and uh, just drop us a line. Yeah, and there's no pressure and it could be in person or online. Okay, Let's we're going to get to questions. questions. Okay, Sarah was asking about preference uh, to the number of bedrooms and bathrooms. Mm -hmm. um, Really, it all depends on the property type that you're in and where it is and what the price rate is. So let's just pick this apart. If it's a townhouse, what we love is this, Sarah. Did you say yeah, that? Sarah. What we love about townhouses, if it can come with two living areas, and there's a reason to this. So two living areas would consist of one living room on the main floor and maybe another living room in the basement. And the reason why we love this is that we've noticed that a lot of tenants uh living with friends yeah they're they're doubling up yeah either you know two friends are living together or two couples are living together or you know two family members because rents are going quite high we're seeing more and more people double up yeah so that's with that and what we love about uh townhouses if it does have a minimum two bedroom if it has the third bedroom it will help it rent out faster but you wouldn't have uh, unless you have a young family in there uh, you wouldn't have it filled up and then two bathrooms definitely does help so that's with the townhouses and they could be older we've bought them in silver springs we bought new ones in walden we buy them in royal oak um would buy them all over it just comes down to the condo fee where should the condo fee be it should be under 300 dollars per month um that's for sure yeah because that's going to eat into your cash flow 
So that is very, very strict criteria that we run by. Uh, and then what amenities are around there. Uh, the next is on um, suited properties. We would only go for minimum two bedrooms up, minimum, because you do get some of these bungalows where they've ripped out a, a bedroom and made one bigger. Two bedrooms up for sure. And we don't mind sometimes if it's a big one bedroom suite of property downstairs, depending on the layout. So it really, really comes down to the layout. We've We've actually been in suite of properties where you got to walk through the basement kitchen to get to the to into the suite. We don't like that. Or if the bathroom, and this happens in townhouses a lot. I mean, we will look past it sometimes if it's newer, if the amenities are better, if the complex is really nice. We will we will we will either look past things or say if there's if it's designed in a way where there's other bathrooms around, like if the basement has a bathroom, <laughs> yeah. the upstairs has a couple of bathrooms. But that two piece that you gotta walk, you're sitting at your kitchen table and you're looking across the table at a two piece bathroom, probably not for that desirable pretend. Yeah. Rule of thumb. If you want to buy something and you you think that okay, I would never live in that basement suite. Then it's probably not going to make a good rental property because tenants will probably feel the same way. You'll have tenants, the turnover will be just you know continuous and it'll be a management nightmare. So if you want, if you could live in a in a house, then odds are tenants will live in a house and you trust your gut anything. Yeah, uh, Kendall's asking me about bonus in Montgomery. You know what, Montgomery, the only thing with Montgomery that you have to be wary about is some of these bungalows that are in there or half duplexes some of them are so old that the basement isn't a full basement they're called dugout basements so when you don't get a full basement it means you can't get full rent for that basement so we need to stress that um is it overpriced in montgomery yeah it's getting up there but you can get half duplexes in there we've yeah. done that okay. he may be on bonus road but you know what there's there's um, restaurants and shops that are on Bonus Road there. And then Bonus, is it overpriced? No, it's nowhere near where it should be. Um, the reason being, uh, Kendall, the biggest thing about Bonus, there's so many infills going in there. People are knocking down those things and building new, new properties. So that alone is going to hold up the community and propel it forward. So um, we're nowhere near uh, with that close to downtown. It's, it's things like if you look at Bonas, you look at and, and north of the city would be Winston Heights, a similar distance. And then south would be Fairview, something like that. Yeah. All of these communities, they're only going one way and that's up. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, we got to pay more money for them right now. Um, but it's totally worth it because it's so desirable in those communities. Okay, we've got a question from Alex. Is there a WhatsApp or Telegram group uh, for day-to-day -day updates? Uh, not right now. We're, we're working on a Facebook group. Yeah, we're looking at it. We need help with social media. So if there's a realtor that wants to join our team, uh, or if you know a cool realtor that uh, may want to work with us, um, we're give value first, ask for business second kind of people, agents. Um, we need help with social media. We are working on a podcast, so, yeah. and the podcast will be great because people can listen to our education uh, a lot easier. And as long as far as updates from crew, we do have this bi-weekly uh, seminar that you're watching right now. That's every second Tuesday. We have our monthly newsletter that goes out. If you want to be notified of specific properties that are coming up you know, in the rental range, the new listings that come on the market, send us an email. We can set you up on an automatic search so you can be you know, emailed every suite of property that comes on the market and say Fairview or Acadia or something like that. Um, then you can be updated on your specific rental property type that you want to get done. Mm -hmm. But uh, the best way to do it is if you need to know something from us, send us an email. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're working with us, um, you get to our investors get, get us, to us all the time. Yeah. I mean, today I got a question about a plumber and, and we've got people with appliances. We've got people in the city that are legalizing, help our clients legalize their suite. So whatever they need, we've been there, done that. We've been doing this for a very, very long time and uh, we're happy to help. Inglewood. Inglewood. Inglewood's a great question. Um, because there's a, there's a mix of properties in there and it's getting quite expensive. Yeah. And one thing about Inglewood that we found out this year, because we came across an Airbnb uh, property for sale, 
Englewood is becoming really, really trendy. And yeah. the young people, Tim had to explain this to me. I, the young people really like it. And Tim, why do young people like Englewood? Because you can walk around with uh, sheepskin vest and sandals. <laughs> well, <laughs> young people like Englewood because it's trendy. It's got, you, you know, you can walk to tons of brew pubs. There's fancy restaurants in there. Um, there's all kinds of unique shops up and down night. It's it's just yeah. a really, really great community. Um, we put clients in there and they're having huge success. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one of the little stories of our, in our book is that on this this half duplex in Inglewood and the amount of money this thing can generate. We go through all the scenarios. Uh, one of our favorite clients, Mark Chalk, bought it. And 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 the only thing with Inglewood and Ramsey that you just have to watch out for is the type of house, Tim, because you can get um, you can get a lot of older types of properties in there and you got to watch those properties. Yeah, like there's, there are some 120, 130 year old bungalows in there that, you know, sometimes the bank may not even put a mortgage on it because the house is too old. Yeah. Or too close to the river in the flood zone and the bank's like, no, we're not going to. Yeah, or too much maintenance yeah. or the property's not big enough. You get a lot of small... Ramsey has these small, small houses and, and we look at them, we just can't get the rents out of them unless they're on Airbnb. Yeah. So it comes down to working out the strategy with that type of property. Can it work? Yes. Will they go up? For sure. The the When the arena In deal... Ramsey, it's not going to be a sheepskin vest, it'll be a goatskin vest. <laughs> but there's goatskin vest, yeah, well, there's chickens too. But anyway, um, you know what? The arena deal is going to get done. East Village is going to get there one day we just don't know when and when there's more concrete on that we will be hard pressed on it right now we've got our brakes on a little bit um someone here is asking about new man would you suggest furnished or um medium term you know what sean um for years uh we were telling people to get the furniture out of their rentals even if it was for uh, executive rental fully furnished or for Airbnb, right now we're telling people to get it back in there. So um, our clients are making tremendous, tremendous, tremendous money doing running their Airbnbs, running their short-term rentals. The oil and gas sector, from what we're hearing from our clients, they're trying to hire people, right? They just can't find them. So what that means is people will come in for short-term contracts and maybe one-year, two-year uh, contracts, and, and they're not going to buy. So they're going to need these properties, and they're becoming more and more appealing. And guess what? Whatever you can do to bump up your cash flow, um, that's what it takes these days with interest rates being where they're at. You have to get creative, and you have to make it work. Okay, next question. Is the city cracking down on illegal suites as diligently as they said they were going to in 2021? Illegal suites, no, they're not cracking down that diligently, but if you get reported, then you have to deal with it. Like if your tenant reports you or a neighbor reports your illegal suite, you have to deal with it. The best way that we tell our clients to deal with it is if they report you as an illegal suite, Throw in an application to legalize it right there, and then you have 12 months to legalize that. Yeah, suite. minimum 12 months. Yeah. And and guys, everyone asking about illegal suites, the only way they get shut down is if you upset the tenants. That's the first way. Yeah. That's normally what happens. And second, if you upset the neighbors. Okay. <laughs> so upsetting the neighbors, what do the tenants do? If you don't match the tenants correctly in a suite of property, they start to party and they upset the, upset the neighbors. And if there's limited parking on that street, whenever we're buying an illegal suite of property for our clients, um, we're making sure that the parking is sufficient enough that there's parking for not just whoever's in your house, but who lives next door as well. Yeah. And the the leniency that they're providing existing suites that were built pre-2018, um, they don't have to be brought up to the, today's building code. They just have to, you know, have the proper safety, like uh, connected smoke detectors, uh, sealed furnace room with drywall all the way around, proper egress windows, separate entrance in and out, but you don't need separate heat controls. That is extended to the end of 2023 whether the city all of a sudden puts in a blanket, no, every illegal suite that you want to legalize has to be brought up to today's standard. Basically what that means, you got to do all those things, plus provide separate heat controls up and down, which means your furnace is going to control the heat for upstairs and you're going to have to have baseboard heat downstairs. We don't know what the city's going to do, but that 
um, the illegal sweet holiday, as we'll call it, goes to the end of 2023. So you still you still have 12 months um, to think about it. And what we're always doing is we buy people with illegal suites that have the potential to be legalized in the future. Yeah, Matt has a quick question. Oh, Center Ace. Max, we love Aaron Woods. We, we're buying in Aaron Woods. We believe in Aaron Woods. The reason why we believe in Aaron Woods is it's further away from the problem communities. And we need to just discuss this with everybody and be up front. Places like Forest Lawn, Radisson Heights, parts of Dover, they're not going to get better. We know that we know that there's other investment groups out there that are pushing these areas on people. They're not going to get better because of the people that are attracted to those communities. There's, there's uh, services in those communities like halfway houses or drug rehab, re rehabilitation centers. There's um, safe injection centers. There's places for homeless people out there. And then that just attracts, um, it, it just means it's not going to get better. Like, I, I don't care what anyone says out there, it's not going to get better. And if you're coming to us, yes, we have bought clients' properties in those areas, but we fully make them understand what they're getting into. And they're the kind of investors that are really, really experienced and they know how to deal with that segment of society. So if you, you're not used to dealing with that, you don't work in you know, outreach or something like that, if you can't deal with those people, we would suggest not buying in those areas because you're going to run into those people. Yeah, th that area is not going to go up. It's not. And so uh, Aaron Wood will continue to go up because it's a safer community. I mean, there's a there's a hot, there's a rec center in there, yeah. a hockey, hockey. Like I said, there's a train tracks that run right to the northwest side of it, and it, it's fenced off, it cuts off Forest Lawn. So you're not going to get a whole lot of that uh, that segment of the population creeping into Aaron Woods, but it is a lower entry price point. So you still have a lower socioeconomic class in that community. And, you know, if you're not used to dealing with that, if you like the high end stuff, if you're, you know, or if it's not your ethnic community that you're dealing with, you know, if you're in the East Indian community, you're probably going to want to be further Northeast and, you know, rent to someone within your community. Yes. Uh, Leah is asking, is Bridgeland a good for investing? Bridgeland is awesome. I mean, you got the sea train there. You can walk across the river. You can be at the zoo. You can be downtown. Um, there's more building going in on there. We know we work with some developers. They're putting up more apartment buildings. It's very attractive. Um, young people are going to love love living there. Once again, it comes down to will prices go up in there? Of course they will. But what it does come down to is... Um, what can you get for rent and can it cover your costs? If you're asking us which is one of those um, inner city communities that we love, I could tell you we love Kensington. Kensington has everything going for it. It has all the restaurants, pubs, bars, you name it. Why do we always talk about that? Because that's where these young people want to be. I don't know. When I was 21, Tim, I lived in Long Island. Why did I live in Long Because uh, 17th Ave was there. The Red Mile was there, right? And so where these young people want to live, guess what? They're going to pay good rents to live there. So that's what it's all about. Bridgeland is definitely one of those. Would I pick Kensington before there or would I pick uh, Lower Mount Royal before there? Uh, would I pick Marta Lou? You know, that's- Depends the on the availability of product. Yeah, and what price? Yeah. I mean, Marta Lou, Tim, we were hitting that so hard. For condos and townhouses in Marta Lou, we were getting such good deals and now it's blown up and it's gone crazy, yeah. right? Okay, uh, lots of Amazon activity southeast of Aaronwoods. Yeah, there's a new distribution center going in there. That will bode well for the rent in Aaronwoods, Ogden, uh, Riverbend, even into, you know, Pembroke, uh, a little north of there, Monterey, things like that. It'll, it'll help out. Any employment center that goes into any community is going to help out with the uh, rent property. Yeah, and I hope we haven't offended anybody out there. I know I always get an email here and there as I you went a bit too far, but we're honest. Like we, we, our job is to make you money. So if we don't believe in a community, we're definitely going to tell you that, no, it's not a good fit. Uh, and here's why, here are the reasons. But our job, when people people send us these properties in some of these communities, we're like, we can do better than that. And when we say it's not always just 
on and, and Tim, we have seen suited properties in say Radisson Heights yeah. that are legal that look beautiful. But at the same time, Tim, the type of tenants you're going to get and how that property is going to look after they're done, if you don't do the right things with those tenants, it's just not worth it. At yeah, the wholesalers will go in there and they'll make a deal with some elderly owner. They'll renovate this place to the nines, but then the whole street is full of unrenovated, rundown properties. And you have this beautiful property that you know someone's gone in and renovated it. And it might look attractive in the rental ad, it might look attractive for you to buy it, but you have to look at what's around it, what the properties look like around it, because that's the type of tenants you're gonna attract. If not, you might attract good tenants, but they won't be there for very long if all the other properties are run down around it. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. That's the biggest and, problem. And, and if they have a nice car, is the garage secure, things like that. So we look at that. We look at crime stats too when we go into communities. So, you know, if you're out looking for properties with us, we'll be able to, you know, educate you on whatever community you're more in, crime stats, things like that. Yeah. And not only that, we've been dealing with clients buying properties for since 2006. So we know what problems our clients have had, where they've had them, and why they've had them. And our job is to help you avoid them so you keep buying more investment properties. So I think that's a bit of a wrap here. Yeah. The conditions were great. In two weeks' time, we're going back to basics. It's all about how to get started the right way with investing in real estate. We're going to go through step-by-step step what we put our clients through uh, so you can see if it's for you. And I think it's a great time to do that. Um, and if you think you want to move forward with investing sooner, um, we encourage you to reach out by email. We will be happy to talk to you and work out a plan. There's no obligation um, at all. And if not, we encourage you to keep learning. Um, this is free. We do it every two weeks. As we mentioned, this is our 180th uh, webinar. We obviously love what we do. Please tell your friends about us. And if they're buying real estate, we would love them to make money from it. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining us this evening and we'll see you in two weeks time.